Right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take, Sharp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us on a Tuesday. By the way, a quick reminder, a programming note. Attorney Michael Avenatti will be joining us in studio tomorrow. And, uh, you know, well, obviously uh, we're going to be getting some people on the right to get into some good debates with them. But if you have an idea, suggestion, or you're one of those people that wants to get in the ring with Michael Avenatti, shoot us an email at producer at thevegastake.com. We always love a good debate from the right and the left. So uh, Michael Avenatti will be joining us in studio tomorrow. Now, uh, J- J.D., do you know what today is? Uh, Tuesday, November 5th. Uh, besides the actual date, what is what is the special, you know, what is special about today it, from the sports perspective? Well, it's first day of college basketball. There you go. That's what I was alluding to. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Besides being, uh, what is the date today, by the way? I don't even know what the date. Wow, is it? that? It's already the that's, first uh, week of November. Unbelievable. It's Friday, December 14th. Well, yes, you are right, J.D. It's Monday, September 3rd. No, it's not. Okay. Okay. No, it's not. Uh, you can't trick me. Uh, but uh, today, you're right. Today is the opening of college basketball and the first game of the T.J. Otzelberger era UNLV basketball in action tonight. That's right. I'm pumped up. It's the Rebel song. You've heard this song before, have you not, J.D.? You're not a fan of it? This is the the, go, the fight Rebel song. You've never heard this song at a game before? They, 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 the band plays it all the time. You'll hear it 30 times tonight. Why are you giving me this blank stare? What did I do? <laughs> Brian, I've heard this song a lot of times. Oh, I'm just asking you. That's yeah. all. You're just all right. you're just extremely excited about UNLV basketball. Well, no, I'm doing a radio show, you're, and I'm you're, you're overly right. I'm enthusiastic okay, about I'm sorry. UNLV basketball. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let, let, let's start this segment over. All right. Welcome back. It's the Vegas Take. Uh, today happens to be the opening day of See, college basketball. See, this is basketball. my speed. I like this. Um, today happens to be the opening day of college basketball. Your name is James Lifton. Um, t- tonight, uh, the, the Rebels are in action at the Thomas and Mack Center. I feel like I'm working for NPR Radio. What are you talking about? Of course I'm excited. This isn't fake. That's what I like to hear. I'm a big college basketball fan. No, this is too much. I, I like the James Lifton stuff. Okay. Well, today, uh, T.J. Otzelberger, it's the era of T.J. Otzelberger. Uh, I'm in the J.D. voice now, and I'm not excited at all. I don't care. But today, Today happens to be the first day of college basketball, so I still want all of my listeners to care, even though I sound like I don't care. No, I'm not going to do that. Number one, I do care. <laughs> I, well, that's what you sound like. That's what you're saying. Uh, I do not sound like that Okay, at all, well, man. you're trying to make fun of me because I'm actually excited. Yes, I'm a big college basketball fan. Kansas is playing Duke tonight. There's a lot of big games tonight, and I will be going to the UNLV game tonight because it is the start of the era. We hope it's a long era. Of the new UNLV basketball coach, T.J. Otzelberger, who has been on this show a couple times. And this is fun. Listen, when Marvin Menzies took over this program, it wasn't fun for a lot of different reasons. First of all, he had no talent. Second of all, I didn't think he would succeed here. He didn't get out in the community. There were a lot of things about him from the get-go that I didn't like. And by the way, me and Marvin Menzies had a few phone conversations before he was even hired. And I didn't like the guy. He just rubbed me the wrong way, and I'm not going to go back into the Marvin Menzies era. I'm glad he's not here anymore because he did a horrible job, and there's a lot of things about him I don't like, but we'll leave that one alone. I like what T.J. Otzelberger has done to start this era before playing a game, even though they had a preseason game. He's gone out in the community. He's done the right things, the things that a coach needs to do to get his face out there, and I appreciate that about him. He's very good to us, and he's been good to the community so far, and he's gone out there, and he's really made the effort, and I appreciate that about him. Now, they're playing a really, I don't want to say unknown, but a Summit League team. What do you know, J.D., about the Purdue-Fort Wayne basketball team that UNLV is playing at the Thomas and Mack Center tonight? Uh, IPFW, what do I know about them? Uh, last year when I wagered college basketball, the average spread on an IPFW game, they were about a 20-point underdog every single time. And today they're a 10.5-point underdog, which does not bode well. I th- isn't it a for UNLV's point? chances of blowing them out? So you don't think it's going to be a blowout? So you think the spread, which is around 10, 10 and a half, is so pretty I, accurate? IPFW is a consistent 20 to 25 point underdog. So why are they only 10? What does that mean? Tell me. You're the professional sports <laughs> handicapper. Right? Yeah, what does it mean? It means that the game is going to be kind of close. Okay. 
So, so, so I don't know a lot about that. I, mean, I know nothing about this team. We do know a lot about UNLV or enough to, to make predictions on the season. We know that there were preseason poll seven. Was it seventh? I think it was seventh in the Mountain West Conference. Uh, we do know that there are a few players on this UNLV team that uh, have come back, uh, Bryce Hamilton being one of them. I uh, certainly had Chuck Nadembele, another one, uh, Nick Blair. So there are a few players, and but I think the big name that came back and a guy that I think might have a chance to play at the next level, but I think this year is really important for him, that is Amari Hardy. So Amari Hardy is going to be starting at the two. And you go through this roster, my issues is with our starting point guard, and I hope I'm wrong. That would be Elijah Long. Now, he is a senior. He transferred over from Texas, only averaging like a bucket or two a game and a few assists. You need more out of your point guard. You need poor production. I think that puts a lot of pressure on Amari Hardy to create for others. But uh, I'm, I, this kid Long is going to have to do a better job. Those type of stats over at Texas are not going to cut it here at UNLV. Do I think this team has a chance to compete for a Mountain West Conference title? I think they have a chance. I don't. Certainly, you look at a team like a Utah State, they are above and beyond any other team in the conference. So let me ask you this. Since this is game one, since it is the opening of the UNLV basketball season, what in your eyes, J.D., is a successful year? When we're sitting here in the second or, you know, second week of March around that time and the season is over, what, how many wins do you think T.J. Otzelberger needs to have and what type of season do you think he needs to have this year? Keep in mind, he is the highest paid coach in the Mountain West Conference. What type of year do you think he needs to have in order for you to say, you know what, T.J., that was a really good, successful year one. Now let's build on this for year two. Uh, 18 and 13, collectively. We'll say top top five in conference. I would I would say top five. They still have a lot of good athletes. Uh, Jung, Donnie Tillman, who the transfer from Utah, who's a very, very good three-point shooter. He's a plus athlete. Amari Hardy is a extremely good scorer. This meet your long kid, I worry about him at point guard. I don't I don't think he's gonna do very well. And when in, in college basketball is a point guards league. I mean it's it's a it's a point guards sport. You have to have very good guard play to be successful in college basketball. And a lot of teams in the Mountain West actually have really good guard play. A lot of these teams are bringing back good guards. And so I think Mitchell Long is going to be one of the worst point guards in the league. And that could be a real issue. Oh, that's so, not good. No, it's not. And, and, and 18 and 13 would be a relatively successful year to me. Obviously, 20 wins would be so if you're somewhere near the ideal. Is the, if you're 18 and 13, you, you have absolutely no chance, right, of getting into the NIT? No. Well, no, you'll make the, I think you'd have a chance making the NIT, but you'd have no chance making the NSA tournament. I think, and, they, I think at minimum they need to be in the NIT this year for it to be a successful year. Now, what that record is, I don't know. Get to, at minimum, the semifinals of the Mountain West Conference Tournament. I'm going to say top four in the league, which might be asking a little bit too much. Again, they were preseason number seven. But if you can get top four in the league and make the semifinals of the Mountain West Conference Tournament in year one, maybe get on NIT home game, it is absolutely a successful year for T.J. Altsberger. Listen, that's not going to be easy. I am concerned defensively. Uh, his teams at South Dakota State were not very good defensively, but great offense to watch. So I am interested in uh, that. They were, they were some of the worst teams in college basketball for, yeah. for several years defensively. But David Jenkins came on our show three weeks ago, and he stated um, verbatim, we've been working on defense let me constantly explain. every single practice. Let me I'm just, just not sure if they have the actual talent. Let me just explain who David Jenkins is. Happen. For those of you who don't know, David Jenkins was on our show a few weeks ago. He is one of the top transfers in all of college basketball. He transferred over from TJ's team here to UNLV. He's not eligible to play this year, but he's eligible next year. Yeah, and, he can shoot. And he, he came from South Dakota State, but he's actually he's from Washington, and he turned down Gonzaga and Oregon as the number two transfer in the country to go to UNLV. So it's a pretty big deal that he followed T.J. Altsburg because the guy had options. Right. And he shot 45% from three last year. Uh, Jenkins and Hardy next year when he, when he can play, that'll be one of the best backcourts in the nation. They're not going to be great defensively. They're, they're not going to be good defensively at guard, I, I don't think, for quite some time. But that'll, that'll be something special next year. But this year... Uh, Elijah Mitru Long, I just don't think he I don't think he has what it takes to be successful. I think you can see these these IPFW guards expose him today in game one. So in this game, and again, I don't know a lot about this Purdue Fort Wayne team, but uh, what we do know is that they got one kid that's six eleven. They do have some height. They got a couple big kids. When you, when you look at a game like this, certainly all the pressure's on UNLV, right? If you're TJ Altsberger, you want to get off to a good start. You certainly don't want to lose to this team in the first game of the year. What do you want to see from UNLV? Uh, obviously, there's going to be, I would imagine, there's going to be a lot of trapping, uh, maybe not a lot of full-court press, but certainly there's going to be trapping, uh, trapping, uh, half-court trapping, that sort of thing. It's going to be an up-tempo game. I believe the over-under total was around 161. Uh, so pretty much they're saying UNLV uh, should be able to get 
into the 80s, maybe even the 90s against this team. So you would imagine that this is going to be an up-tempo game, correct? Yeah, it should be. I mean, it's a very up-tempo offense. Yeah. So the, their their style of play is going to be up tempo, but I, I mean it's going to it's going to consist of a lot of trapping. It's going to consist of a lot of probably a lot of pressing. But again, I don't know if they have the athletes defensively to make that successful. And if they don't, yeah, you, you, it'll be a a ninety five eighty five game or or an eighty five seventy six game or something along those lines. Competition JD gets difficult coming up. The, their schedule is very very good. Uh, their second game of the year is actually home, and I'm really looking forward to this one. We get to see a pretty good Kansas State team come to the Thomas and Mack Center this weekend on Saturday. Then all of a sudden they go on the road. Not an easy game against Cal. They play California on the road, and then they play UCLA on the road. So uh, and of course their coach. Uh, we thought he was going to be the next Mick Cronin. Thought we were going to be the next <laughs> yeah, UNLV exactly. coach. I think UCLA is going to be and, very and good this they year. They have a ton of talent. They yeah. have Shaq's son, Sharif O'Neal. Yeah. Fresh off a heart And I was procedure. actually talking to a coach, a friend of mine, who has been at some of UCLA's practices that's saying Shaq's son is a lot better than advertised. Well, I mean, uh, he, they play they play Texas he, he State. Was a, he was a five-star kid. Yeah. So UNLV also uh, plays Texas State. Uh, they play SMU at home. They play Jackson State at home. And then the schedule gets tough again. They, uh, their last uh, game before conference play, uh, actually, correct. let me correct you there. They play Fresno State uh, early in the season, but they also play BYU. They play Cincinnati on the road. So there are some tough games for UNLV before we get to conference play. This is a very this is a game, obviously, they have to win. you got to beat this Fort Wayne team, and then Kansas State comes to town. We're really going to see how good this team is. But point I'm trying to make is I give T.J. Altsberger, even though he might have not made this game, entire schedule i do give unlv credit for having a tough out of conference schedule because it really is something that you absolutely need especially when you're in the mountain west conference when we know it could be just a one bid league this year right it is possible that utah state could be the only team that makes the ncaa tournament would you agree with that that's very possible brian that's Uh, a very uh, bad conference number number 17 in the country utah state plays montana state tonight they're a 16 point favorite which again is kind of low um I, i I do, I do applaud T.J. Altsberger for coming out and, and playing Kansas State and Cal and UCLA to start the season. Marvin Menzies would have not done that. In fact, he would have done the exact opposite. He liked to, to have cupcakes to inflate his win total. I don't see that happening with T.J. Altsberger. That's why I think with 18 wins with this schedule, which is not an easy schedule um, out of conference, so that means he'll probably go 60% in conference. I think that would be a successful season for him because – he has chosen to schedule some difficult opponents in his out of conference. So I just got a text from Ken Thompson. You do a show with him Friday mm, night. He's a professional sports handicapper, and he does a show here uh, Monday through Friday. I believe it's 8 to 10 p.m. So uh, he just sent me a little of information on this team that UNLV is playing. So uh, IPFW was 18 and 15 overall last year, 9 and 7 in the Summit League. So nothing to be embarrassed about there. Right. They have only two starters coming back. They did lose their best player, Concher, who averaged 20 points per game last year. Uh, they split with TJ's team last year, one and one. So this coach is obviously knowledgeable with what kind of system that TJ runs. Uh, this is a team that's averaged 19 wins a year over the course of the last four years. So that's the reason why this is not a 20-point spread. That's why it is a 10-point spread, and that is why uh, the people who set these lines are saying this might be a closer game than people think. So this is, not, I guess, what we're trying to say here is this is not necessarily a pushover basketball team. No, it's not. This is a team that knows how to win in the Summit League. They have a good coaching staff, and this is a coaching staff that is very familiar with T.J. Altsberger's system. So this is not one of those pushover games that UNLV is accustomed to having in like the first game of the year. UNLV is going to have to perform tonight. And I don't know what the fan support's going to be like. I have no idea. I know that when they played an exhibition game against Baptist College, uh, the crowd was terrible. But again, that is a preseason game. Uh, we tried to get Francois on the show today, the athletic director for UNLV, and we were told she was traveling. So I don't know if that means she's not going to be there for the first game of the year. But uh, who knows? Maybe she's looking for a football coach as we speak. I don't know. That's her business. But anyway, UNLV in action tonight. We will certainly talk about the game tomorrow. We will be there. We will be watching it firsthand. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about a Monday night football incident. And I'm not talking about how horrible the Giants were last night, particularly in the second half. It involves a cat, a black cat. I'll explain exactly what that means coming up next. You're listening to The Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Don.